I'm Denise. I'm the Scottish one. And she's a non-fiction editor. And I'm Louise, the English one. And she's a fiction editor. And together, we're the Editing Podcast. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the um, Editing Podcast. Um, Denise and I are really excited this week because um, we've got to chat to Daniel Human, the founder of Intelligent Editing and the developer of, I think, what's perhaps the most loved editing software on the planet. Is that right, Denise? Oh, definitely. I don't know. I don't know any professional editor who can work well without it. I think it's one that we all absolutely love having. We do. So thanks yeah. for coming on, Daniel. It's lovely to have you. Thank you. You can't see, but I'm I'm grinning in, in with, with what you've just been saying. That's, that's, one, that's lovely to hear. Yeah. Uh, so, Daniel, do you want to give us a quick overview first of, of Perfectit? Because some of our listeners um, already know it and love it, um, but some people won't have tried it and they won't know what it does. So um, tell us a bit about Perfectit. Sure. So even after 10 years, I'm still I still start by defining it in the negative. Perfectit is not a spelling or grammar checker. Um, so what it's doing instead is two things. It's uh, a consistency checker. So did you hyphenate a word one way in one place, not in another? Uh, did you capitalize a word one way in one place, not in another? And then it's a sort of style guide enforcer. So you can uh, build uh, your preferences in and use Perfect It to, to enforce those. So what you would prefer for uh, hyphenation, what you would prefer for capitalization, it can just check all of those. Brilliant. I mean, it, that's such a uh, oh, I mean, just the time that we spend on on making those decisions and then trying to implement them by, by eye. Yeah, it's, just, it's it, one of those in it's one of those invisible things as well, isn't it? That when it's done well, you don't you don't see it, but when it's done badly, you really you do notice yes, it. Yeah, yeah, it stands out yeah. a mile. But um, enforcing that consistency can make such a difference in presenting a polished version of your mm. writing and just really giving it that that professional finish um yeah a hundred percent it's the idea that you know all of those things they are mistakes that you can find by hand you you can there's, there's nothing that the software is doing that you it's impossible for you to do on your own the advantage is that it's just doing them quickly and as you say giving you that assurance that that these little, little mistakes that just stand out to to readers won't, uh, you know, you're a faster way to find those. Yeah. And so we, we use it, we're, Denise and I are both editors, but, um, uh, and editors I know is a big chunk of this market, but it's not just for editors, is it? It's for writers too. Do you want to talk Absolutely. about a little bit more about um, your other audiences? Absolutely. Um, so we've always sort of designed uh, with with editors in mind, but that's the wonderful thing. So I think I got it from, well, it depends which country you're in. Is it Nike or Nike? And they always sort of used to oh. say, well, they design for athletes and then everyone will follow. And, and it's true with, oh. with the editors as well. Like if you, if you design for that core top audience and you make a product that's right for editors, then it's absolutely going to be right in other markets. So um, medical writers is one of our biggest groups. Uh, if you're preparing submissions or uh, if you are preparing clinical research studies, complex documents, it's really helpful on those. Uh, lawyers are a big group, so contracts, um, proposal writers, you know, there are people using Perfectit with, you know, tens of millions of dollars at stake on a, on a, on a document. Uh, and uh. to make sure you don't have those little mistakes creeping in is just immensely valuable. Yeah. Um, and keeps the, the the readers and all the the people who might be handing over the money keeps them focused on the on the message rather than than on on like you say those little errors and inconsistencies precisely you want them to focus on the science not on mm. whether or not you've got the correct hyphenation yeah yeah and i suppose the same would be for you know, your in your indie authors um louise our indie authors who uh, you want people to focus on their story and if yeah. you're building a complex world out there um it's important to keep that consistency through it in all yeah. sorts of things not just spelling and hyphenation but in you know complex names or you know yeah. 
I'm trying to think of other things. Well, now, I mean, you know, things, lots things, of things, things like, things that, like yeah. with like, especially with um, the speculative fiction just comes to mind or fantasy fiction where you've got where it's quite important that that capitalization is consistent so that, that, that the reader can understand the world they're in. And mm -hmm. the great thing about Perfecta is that it means that those writers can do that self-editing themselves. So it, so yes, professional editors uh, love it because that makes our job easier. But but um, but it means that authors can self-edit where, wherever they come yeah. from. And that yeah. Absolutely, and we had a we had an offer that's you know particularly successful there, which was uh, we have an article called something like you know check your first book for free, um, and said, because you know it doesn't take very long to run perfect it, and it's got a two week free trial period. If you're an indie author and you're coming to do that first book, yeah, you can just you can get the whole book done within the free trial, and and we say at the end of the at the end of the article with you know on the second book then then you'll you'll buy it, but you get that chance to to get that level of ed editing expertise yeah. on it. And, and for the first one, you're not paying anything. So I think it's been particularly successful in that market because of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a great point. It really is. Yeah. So so if I'm thinking about all of those different groups, you know, the, the, not just the indie authors then, but, you know, going back, the medical writers, the proposal writers, lawyers, editors, I feel like what ties them all together um, is that they don't they don't want to be spending their time looking at these sort of mechanical small details and the way I've the way I've come to explain that is kind of a it's kind of a question which I'll, I'll I will demonstrate or, or turn back on you which is something like yeah. <laughs> you know if you think about the driving force of why you got into editing in the first place what what makes you excited about it during the day I mean for you what is that um Ooh. can I take that first yeah please um, so do from a from a fiction editor's point of view, um, my my way into that was was all about helping authors make their stories better, and um, there's lots and lots of bits to that. So there's 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 making sure that the the pace there is there, the drama's there. Um, you know, I'm thinking about kind of how those characters speak and 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 the kind of ability of that of that author to. Um, make the reader want to immerse themselves in the world they've created and that's actually the bit of my time that takes the most that's the bit where I have to really really engage but if it's if that editing process that kind of more immersive emotional um editing side of things is 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 marred because of um these sort of mechanical or, or sort of micro level problems then it's kind of like a, it's a little bit like time wasted or a job half done so so for me ed editing was and an, it's partly about it's it's mainly about helping uh, uh, writers get their books to market but that requires more than one thing it's not about just fixing typos it's not just about making sure everything's consistent it's also about something deeper it's about helping them tell a story um and i guess some of that must have a lot of that must apply to non-fiction editing as well denise because yeah. like you're still your your writers are still telling a story aren't absolutely. they absolutely uh, and it's about and for me it's about clarity of message for my non-fiction authors um so although i'm not getting immersed in a story to the same depth as you are probably what i am doing is constantly trying to focus on is the tone right for the the target audience is it a compelling story um is is it is the language jargon free very often you know businesses can be a bit prone to you know l language that is convoluted and a bit obscure and opaque and it's mm. cutting through all that and in the same way i can be distracted from that by these more mechanical issues that need to they need to be dealt with but mm. you don't want to be you don't want to be spending 50 um, spending, of your no, editing time you don't want to be spending all your time doing that and you don't want to be um, drawn away from your deeper editing as you work through it which is why I'll always run and I think you do this as well I'll run perfect it first before I start I mean yeah. actually editing the words is one of the last things I do and perfect running perfect it is one of the first because it gives me a good overview of the shape of the writing and and it helps me get rid of all those small inconsistencies and make decisions on style as well that takes away all that distraction when it comes to actually working on the text and the message so that I can really focus my time and my energy where it's needed. That's a really so good point. Bit, so let me, um, 
let me ask a question there though. So, so when I want to go back, I want to go back to the like, really existential level, which is, you know, as uh, Louise is answering, you know, what, what was it about the job that drives her and, and talked about helping people tell their stories? What, mm-hmm. what, what what is that for you, Denise? But it's a very similar sort of thing, but it's it's helping um, people to um, clarify and get their message across. Whether that's a, a that could be a business report, it could be a non-fiction memoir, but it's helping them express their story, whatever that story is, as clearly as possible, um, to and pitching it at the right level for whoever their audience is as well. See, that makes that makes complete sense to me and, and 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 so the reason why I asked that question and the reason why I've been asking that question I've asked that dozens of times now is that I love the answers and I love that <laughs> nobody has ever said you know the answers are, are interesting in their own right but nobody has ever come back and said you know what I really love about editing the thing that wakes me up in the morning and I'm dying to do is check hyphenation consistency <laughs> Oh, but know, we have no... other weird things. So one of my favourite things is changing hyphens to end dashes. I just love finding <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah. But I'll still so, use a wild card for it. But, you know. <laughs> you're right, Denise. There isn't. It's not the primary driver initially, <laughs> but there's a weird kick that comes to that that micro oh, 100%. level. Hundred percent. It's you know asking this question of detail oriented people. Of course, yeah. of course, the getting it right yeah. is is a is a is a big <laughs> yeah. factor. But it's different to what got you into the profession in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. To take it all the way back to your question about you know who is perfected for and who is the audience, that's really what ties them all together. If you're a proposal writer, medical writer, whatever it is, you're not somebody who wants to spend the t- you don't you're not you didn't get into that those professions to to spend your time yeah. checking hyphenation consistency. You got yeah. in because you care about the work, and yeah. that's ultimately why I think people go for perfect and why they like yeah. it. Yeah, because the, you you that piece of software is basically it's doing something that you that you 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 want done and you want it done well but you don't want to have to spend all your time on it because you've got other things you want to do and um and i just want to throw in something else which is it is it isn't it isn't that sort of more ex- existential stuff it is sort of going down to the sort of nitty gritty but one of the things that i discovered when when i started using perfect it was that that it was that shaping thing that that um denise mentioned it was um it was getting an idea for the shape of the of the book quite early on um so it was like a kind of mini editing pass um Mm -hmm. that was just part of the process and it meant that i could um get a a feel for like what kind of concepts and things were were coming up uh, are coming up in the narrative or the dialogue and and i can start to build style sheets from there which will become a, a fundamental part of my editorial report and and so getting that overview via a piece of software as, I, as I'm as I'm looking at, the, at those consistency checks, just helps me prepare for that kind of more deeper immersive level stuff later. So they are connected. Definitely. Yeah. We we talked about saving time. Um, now Denise and I have both had a little play on um, Perfect It Four, and um, it is so much faster. It really yeah. is. Astonishingly fast. <laughs> I'm you can't really start surprised. Again. That's lovely to hear. It's, it's a big change. <laughs> it, it, I actually it, did a double take. I was like, God, it's done it already. <laughs> yeah. I, I really was surprised by it. It wasn't it wasn't a full book document. It was a sample I was using, but it it was still far quicker than I would have expected from Perfect at Three. I think a noticeable yeah. improvement. Definitely. So the big the big time saving is at the beginning. So when you first click start in Perfect and you have it scan your document, it's doing a lot of work. Um, and that's where we've really focused and we've cut that amount of time. It's going to be especially significant if you're working on, on book length or, you know, when you're doing hundreds of pages, that mm-hmm. difference is really big. Documents, lots of tables, you're really going to experience it. Um, and And... And it's a, I think it's a really good thing, not just because of the amount of time, which is significant, but it's also about concentration. So if I just, you know, if I turn this back on you guys again, when Perfect, you know, was used to think for whether it was 20 seconds, a minute, two minutes, whatever that time was, what what did you do? <laughs> do you want to answer that first, Anthony? <laughs> I, I don't know why. Don't, don't, yeah. I might have gone and made a cup of tea or something. Yeah. Not, that, not that it took, um, and but actually that is a, that is probably what I would have done. I would probably set it running. I'm thinking of book length things. I would have probably clicked start, knowing that it would have taken a little bit of time. It was still wasn't ridiculous, but 
rather than sitting looking at it, I would go away and do something else. And it might be making a cup of tea or it might be um, preparing an invoice for somebody else. Or but I, I would use, I wouldn't be sitting looking at the screen. I would be doing something else, definitely. You're the yeah. same, Louise. Um, the other thing I do um, with that time is, is um, I, do, I do use it for breaks, but I also use it... Um, well, it's still a break, but it's work break. So I might, like Denise, I, I do invoicing, but I also use that time to do things like social media posts or um, promote my books and my editing services, because that's the time I can use to make me more visible. And and that's important to me because um, a, a, a presentations expert, um, I'm a friend of, called Simon Raybould, um, has done quite a lot of research into um, how you can work more efficiently and sometimes taking a break just means doing something else mm -hmm. um, and it can still be productive and work related but that he, he he reckons that you can if you start dividing up your day into um, blocks of spaces so that you're you're doing certain types of activity when you're most um, engaged with them and you're concentrating it's coming back to your point Daniel about concentration that you get more done it, 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 whereas if you if you start trying to pull out if you start trying to do like five hours editing work and then two hours social media or two hours marketing or an hour's invoicing you don't do any of those things as well and so what I found is with those when I start to break things up and use my time more efficiently I'm not actually spending more time I'm just using it in different ways and yeah. so that I can focus and concentrate in smaller um, gaps and, and, and use my time creatively and, um, and um, productively. So that answer is fantastic. And it, and, and it shows why you guys are, you know, at the absolute top of your field, because you've been given a small amount of space and you've both figured out these great coping strategies for it. Mm. What I would say is that the fact it shouldn't be forcing you to do that. Like it shouldn't be forcing yeah, yeah. you to go get a cup of tea and it shouldn't, it, although you, you know, you're going to do it at some point and it shouldn't mm -hmm. be forcing you to go on your social media and, and other people are going to get really distracted at that point. Not everyone can maintain their attention the way that you, you know, you both described there, but, but it shouldn't be forcing you to do that. And now if you want to take that break, it's a deliberate choice. Yeah. 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 yeah it's sure. Leave you concentrated and, and you're not going to have to go just because you've clicked click the start button. Mm, so I think that's yeah, a really yeah. big difference. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Gives you that continuity. You press start, it does it very quickly. You don't have time to make a tea. You're straight into it. And you, and yeah, you can maintain that. Ruined, I'm really sorry. Oh, so I'm just going to have to find another excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Less tea, tea drinking. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so the other thing that I love about the new version of Perfect It is... Um, the window where the errors show up and for so just to, I'll just give a quick explanation of my perception of this um so the perfect it three um you could it, that still had a panel where it showed up the errors but I always had to flick my vision over to the screen so that I could make contextual decisions and um again it might not seem like a big deal but it's it's still flicking my eyes from one space to another now if I want to most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time, I can see the context of the potential errors that Perfectit is showing me in the error pane. And that's helped me make decisions about whether to fix or whether to leave alone much more quickly. Now, I haven't timed it. I don't know how much time it's saving me, but I it, I felt the difference. Yeah, yeah I, I absolutely agree with that because that process of having to look over, just locate it, read it in context and make a decision. In a book length document, that really adds up that time. Okay. Like you say, it's only a fraction of a, you know, a minute at a time, but it adds up and the pain is now big enough that I think I would have confidence of reading down, say, seven or eight things of clicking fix all, which I would yeah, almost yeah. never do. Yeah. I would almost never click fix all unless I knew it was absolutely something that was, you know, not in doubt. But look, for hyphenations and things like that, to be able to see them in context is really important. Yeah. Um, and that was definitely never a fix all situation. But yeah, I would, absolutely. I would definitely do that now. I would actually yes. even say that that is my possibly my favourite thing about the new version. Mm. That, that that just for me being able to expand that window and make those choices um 
on the spot there was um that's really i think that's a lovely new feature yeah. that's it's, wonderful it's, to hear so the it's it's a really difficult one i love podcasts but we are in one of those moments where it's so difficult to explain because <laughs> sure, yeah we're yeah. describing a user interface but yeah. the difference <laughs> is it's probably just a second it's the difference between you know in the old format what you did was you you clicked on the location you looked at the location text then you moved your mouse to click fix and now you can just look and click fix in one go so it's it's probably just a second but mm-hmm. those seconds are going to add up over the course of the document. Mm. Yeah. So, um, we we should say that we'll 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 be putting links in so people can go 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 and see um videos. We'll put links into your site, Daniel, so people can know actually see that user interface in wonderful. action. Um, yes. at, at, yeah. in the show notes. That will I make it so much clearer. I yeah. think for editors who are already using this, they'll get what we're talking about. You know, if somebody's already using Perfect, it, they'll know what we mean when we're describing this situation. But if somebody hasn't experienced perfect it before and i think it is an experience rather than just a use yeah, yeah. Um, i think if you haven't experienced it before i think it would be you're probably thinking what on earth are they <laughs> why are they getting so excited about just you know a couple of seconds here and there but i i think once you actually try it um and see just how how much of a difference that makes and how over as we keep saying longer reports and book length documents those seconds do add up and those seconds are important when you're trying to be efficient in your editing you know so let me ask you this so I, I you know i explain it as being important because of of you know it shows you context now you can mm-hmm. see the context and that's really what matters in all these situations because the software doesn't understand context and you the editor do mm-hmm. um but then you know this is something that we've been using in our marketing like we, we'll say look it saves you a second each time and those seconds add up and overall it's two minutes every time you run perfect it let's say we haven't we're still working the exact timings but let's say it's two Mm -hmm. minutes each time you run perfect it and we can do a sort of business case do the 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 maths of it all and work out that well that's over the course of a year you've now saved three times the price of 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 the software it's it's no-brainer it pays for itself but i'd love to check you know with the two of you like is this really true? Like it's it, we we can we can sell that as being yes, it all adds up. But it, at the end of the day, it's two minutes. It's two yeah. minutes. Mm-hmm. Is that actually useful time from a, from an editor's perspective? Well, yeah, well, yeah. Louise, you've done you've done the maths, Louise. We've talked about this. You've done the maths. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've done a little bit of maths. Um, I worked out that it's six minutes per project because um, I run it three times, so that's six minutes and you know, say 25 books a year, 30 books a year, whatever. So those are the numbers. But the thing is for me, and I think I'm pretty sure you're the same on this, Denise, but you can, when I've shut up, you can come in. <laughs> um, for me, uh, as someone who's an experienced editor, marginal gains are everything. I'm not, I, I know that I think people, when they're starting out um, in the business of writing or editing, and there there's so many things that they can introduce and so many tools that they can try to save time and make the most of their day. For me, um, I'm at the stage now where I'm, I can only make, run my business better by introducing marginal gains. And so for me, it's, if I've got six minutes shaved off a project, what can I do with that? How many invoices can I send out? How many posts can I um, schedule on social media? How many um, responses can I send out to um, people who've asked me to, to quote for them? Um, how many um, can I use that time to update my style sheet or start writing an editorial report for an author? Every minute counts. And so and, and and I think that for any pro business owner, whether they're writing, editing or doing anything else, if, if as soon as you're working with words, if you can find ways to, to shave off time, that's that's in effect, that's like stealing time. That's like that's like a freebie given to you. And that's what I I want to use tools in my business that can help me do that, but without compromising on quality. And so for me, that's what it's about. And I was yeah. thinking about this the other day and um in fact, Denise and I were chatting about it. She, Both of us have got some really good examples. But I was thinking about a TV programme I saw a few years back when um, that business um, guru and troubleshooter, Digby Jones, talked about how he'd gone into t- Toyota and helped them um, massively improve efficiency. 
um, simply by looking at tiny, tiny little marginal gains that they could make here and there, like moving a piece of machinery to, to a slightly different part of the room. For me, that's kind of what I, perfect it is. It's, it's my Digby Jones. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> You're going to call it Digby there. I'm just going to run. I am. am. (laughs) You've got a good example. Um, Well, yeah, it was funny because when when, um, Louise and I were sharing some notes about this and and she'd made this comment about marginal gains. And before I read any further to get to the point where she said, oh, you know, talking about her Digby and Toyota, it immediately made me think of um, British Cycling and Sir Dave Brailsford. Are you familiar with this? Daniel no. at all. So uh, uh, about six or seven years ago, British Cycling was not in a good place. And Sir Dave Brailsford came in, he was a performance director, and he decided that they needed to look at marginal gains and focus on them. So they looked at every aspect of the whole process of running a cycling team and it, everything from Um, teaching them to wash their hands properly to reduce infections. Uh, They took their own pillows everywhere they went with them, again, to reduce infection and keep them fit. Um, They used aerodynamics to improve marginally on all sorts of aspects of the bike design. They even noticed that there was dust gathering where they did the mechanics and that affected the bike performance. So they they um, painted the floor white so that they could spot dust and dirt and keep it away from the bikes. And all of these things, 1% added up to them becoming, from being virtually a laughing stock of cycling, apparently, well, they won, look at the run they had of multiple Olympic and world titles and medals. Yeah, yeah. And it but was that's... all through marginal gains. And that's great to hear because that, ma- that makes a lot of sense. It's very much, you know, the, the kind of thing we've, we've been thinking about because you're, yeah. if you're using perfect at three you're already going a lot faster you're already yeah. on that cycling mm. team but yeah. how you get faster no marginal gains that's that's wonderful to hear that's great mm, yeah and f- for me it's it's similar to louise perfect it isn't the only tool that we use so we're using perfect it we're using text expander we're using macros we're maximizing our use of word styles and templates and all these things are adding up to helping deal with the mechanical sort of side of the process of editing and that allows us more time to focus on where we can be of most use in terms of really helping the writer's message and focusing on the actual content um, that that we're working on. Would you say that's true Louise? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Mm -hmm. I I think that's it, it's just that Uh, and I I often say to um, newer people starting out in writing or editing um like don't ignore these marginal gains because it's too easy to dismiss them as as which is kind of where we started this section of the conversation this like yeah but you know what's two minutes what's six minutes here and there you you start to look at those over the course of a year and think about what you you can do with your business if you're not thinking about how to use those marginal gains the space that marginal the the space that something like perfect it gives you then you should be. That's, that's mm. my, my answer to it. The other thing as well is if you're um, starting out and you're maybe uh, working on jobs where you're maybe on quite a low budget or you're you know working for a fairly low early rate because you're getting started and you're mm. you know you're having to take these jobs to get the experience. It helps you to do a better job for those clients because it's taking care of all those mechanical things that you might spend too much time worrying about as a as a newer editor, perhaps, and give you time to focus on the the more noticeable, important textual changes that you can make that the that your client is going to be more aware of than mm. how things are hyphenated and punctuated. But overall, it makes it a much better document that you're mm. handing back at the end of the day. So don't wait to be a you know an experienced editor to use it. It makes a big big difference right from the beginning, mm. definitely. And you do hear people saying, I'm, I'm sure, I think you've, you've, I've heard you have discussions about this before, Daniel, but, you know, people, people say, um, oh, I don't need, I don't need um, tech help with this stuff. I can, my eye's good enough. And mm. it's... It, it, I, I, and, and the worst thing I can say in that situation is, uh, you are wrong, because you, <laughs> but once, once you get into that discussion, it goes nowhere. Yeah. I always do the same thing, which is just, I know you don't believe me. Uh, but try it. 
try it on that document that you think you did perfectly, that you spent, that you went over four times. Just run it. It's a free. It's a free download. Uh, it's yeah. only going to, you know, it's, it's up and running in no time. You don't need any instruction. Just give it a quick ch- try and see if it really genuinely doesn't find anything. Yeah. And if they, it's a long document, there's just no way. The human brain cannot be that consistent. You, mm-hmm. the, the software is taking every hyphenated phrase in a document and comparing it to every other phrase in the document in a matter oh. of seconds. So, of that, course, it's, you know, the, the level of accuracy there is is, is is higher than you can possibly achieve. And, and even if the human brain could do that, <laughs> it, it can't do it as fast. It just can't. <laughs> exactly. It just can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It shouldn't. And it shouldn't, you know, and even then, in the extreme case, you know, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm challenging them on the document that took four passes. But what if you can get that down to two passes yeah, by using yeah. software? Yeah. Mm. The, the gain is just huge. Yeah, that's immediately your hourly rate's gone up. So um, and, yep. and you can that gives you time to either do to do the things that you love doing, whether that be writing or whether you be editing or whatever. So, yeah. Or drinking tea, drinking yeah. tea yeah, or, some, or even maybe even something a little bit stronger because, you know, it's, it is that time of the a evening little, now. Little, yeah. Gin o'clock. Oh, gin o'clock, yes. <laughs> it's five hours behind here. I have to stick to the tea, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> So um, should we talk about styles now? Because one of the features that um, I love is the fact that you that there are these onboard styles which you can use as they are or you can customise them. And that's great because it, it those styles tell Perfect It what to look for. And so if you've got different clients with different requirements, um, you can choose what kind of um, things, what, what decisions you want it to flag up for you. Um, now, there are some new styles as well. Daniel, do, do you want to? I'll jump in here and, and, and sure so the new things in perfected for we've added um gpo style which is often used in for u.s government documents uh-huh. um we have improved the american legal style so for u.s lawyers it's, it's twice as many corrections as it used to do uh-huh. we've updated the european union and united nations style guides so those are and the um the who style guide so those bring them in line with their latest uh, versions of their manuals but I think, you know, more at the more basic level, um, the, the power of styles is that I, mean, I, I would just find it one of the hardest things about being an editor is keeping track of of different preferences for different yeah. clients. Yeah. And I don't know how you can do it because, I mean, I, it's one of the reasons why Perfecta exists is because, you know, I'm half American, half British, and I can't keep track of those preferences. Never mind which journal <laughs> yeah. wants advisor with the yeah. E and which one wants advisor with yeah, the yeah. O when they're both <laughs> yeah. correct and no dictionary will spot it. So having the, the you know the fundamental thing that Perfect is trying to do is help you with that 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 variation because that's just so hard. Yeah, and it's just it's just a lot of brain power again that you have to spend on when you could be using that time for other things. Um, because yeah. then especially if you're an editor or a writer who's um, working with clients who um, on who have different requirements, but you're having to run those jobs concurrently, that's a brain freeze. Just yeah, waiting to happen. And I do that a lot. <laughs> My what, brain freeze. A lot. Brain freeze. <laughs> yeah, no, I no, I work with um, simultaneously with different clients with different requirements. It's, I mean, I'm quite. It's quite normal for me to have two, three, or even four different projects on the go at once. Um, some of which have overlapping styles and some of which have separate styles. So it is much easier if you have something reliable rather than just your yeah. your brain and then or constantly referring back to hard copy style guides or you know a, a pdf yeah. of, that's 48 pages of a style guide and you're well, looking that's, so denise, that's, you I, know. Think, I think denise you're, what, what you, one thing you covered there is something you're really going to like in the new mm-hmm. version that i've sort of struggled to explain um we were, we were trying to figure out what to call it and we went through the names root and branch, which is what it technically is. And it looked up root and branch on Google. And, and that means something so different. You take something out, root and branch is really different to its technical use. And the other one is parent, child. And again, you just like these, no one was ever going to understand. So we ended up calling it, what, what do we call this overlapping style situation? We're just calling it styles based on styles. Right. And that makes sense. I, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> really <laughs> simplify styles are based on other styles. And um and, and the idea is that if you have one thing which might be your your underlying root base preference that you use for maybe every single job or maybe most jobs, and then you have individual styles that you will use for you know a certain client, 
you can mix those. So you, yeah. you, the, the new combined feature creates a third style that, you know, it, you take your base style, you take the, the additional style you're adding and you create a third style from it. Or the, oh, new, right. the, the way the new button works is you click new and it says, do you want to make a star and do you want to base it on, base one it on other something? Star? Could you do that before? Could you, could you do that in Perfect 3 based on? I think you could, couldn't you? Not really. No. Not really. You could, if you were really good with it, you could do a an import and an export and you, or you could do a combine that just kind of merged it. But, right. but actually having the ability to create a third one, to create something different from it, uh -huh. is just so much better and so much easier to understand, I think. Yeah. So you may have figured out how to do it in Perfected 3, but it wasn't easy. Now it, now it makes sense, and it makes sense in a way that it's not going to be completely there at launch. But over time, what we'll do is we can make it so that when you update that base, do you want that base to feed into the other one automatically or not? Is going to be an interesting question so there's lots of things you can do to maintain your styles because they're not a one-off thing you, certainly your base yeah. one is not a one-off thing you do it's something you're building over time and we're going to make that a lot easier that sounds great because i have that is one of my biggest issues is a lot of my um, work in educational publishing has fundamentally the same uk based english and um, language and punctuation styles but each project even with the same publisher will have different things unique to that one that, that you need to try and hold in your head so being able to do that will be such a difference really and also I learned the hard way about um I had imported styles but I had neglected to export my styles and save them and then I lost them all <gasps> me too did that happen to you I did yeah. my my computer something really bad happened to its hard drive and I got everything back except all my styles it was all just blank oh. yeah we need to we need to do a little guide or something to yeah to prove and, and it was only when I was talking to um Tom at um, one of the events earlier this year so and he said yes your chief engineer that's right sorry and he said oh yeah you can just export your files into a csv cbs file and i was like oh now you tell me <laughs> 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 right. or or rather oh that's probably there somewhere in the help but i had neglected to look for it you yeah, know never. we need we need to improve that we can't have people yeah. losing styles and have it be the thing that they don't know about so I, absolutely it's it, mm -hmm. It gets complicated because, of course, the nice thing about Perfecta is that it's not the, 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 the local version is that it's not accessing the Internet in any way. Mm -hmm. And 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 if it's not accessing the Internet, that's that's great for client confidentiality, but it's not so good for backing up styles. Mm -hmm. So yes. there's sort of a problem there. And, and, and maybe just, you know, making people more aware of the export button will be a, a good start. Mm. Yeah. Just one thing I want to come back to, just so that listeners who are um, perhaps not familiar with perfect it in any of its versions is that what we're talking about here is a situation where if you've got something like uh, a style guide which you normally refer to and it's 500 pages long and you know I, I have had in the past books on my desk with thousands of post-it notes with little scribbles on them saying this is the rule for um, hyphenation this is the rule for bracketed citations or this is the rule for this this is the rule for that the great thing about Perfect It is that you're not flicking pages any longer and looking for post-it notes. You can actually build these preferences into a style and then just let it go. And that's just that's just not only a tidier desk, it's just a massive, massive time saver. So um, if you're using Perfect It, but you haven't played with styles, you should do. If you've got Perfect It 3, getting Perfect It 4 is worth it because styles are more manageable than ever. Just mm -hmm. the, big, big thing, the big thing we're going to try and explain on this one is, is, is one step further even, which is something like, and if you're an in-house editor and you have a team of people who, who follow your style manual, can you use Perfect It to, to actually enforce it? So that, you know, they might tell you they're reading that style manual, but they probably aren't. Um, oh, so yeah. as, a, as a way of actually getting them to pay attention and can you use it as a teaching tool so you can build things into styles you know you can have it stop uh, on specific words that you think people need to consider about and use carefully and you can give them your guidance and it can be there when they're actually doing their writing because if you're an in-house editor you can't edit everything in, in a company so using the tool to help teach and improve the actual quality of language uh -huh. among yeah, the rest yeah. of your colleagues that's one of the things that I used um, in one of my style sheets that I had created was um, it was almost like a plain English type thing that this particular client had certain words that they absolutely did not want us to use, like, you know, certain sort of buzzy trigger 
business type words like you know key concepts and stuff like that they wanted us to or benchmark you weren't allowed to use benchmark or cr critical and stuff they, you know it's a good plain language thing and to be able to put those words into a style guide just to say a style sheet and perfect it just to say this word is here consider using something else yeah. was yeah. really was really helpful because when you're reading it you kind of you, it's easy to sort of gloss over them and not remember which ones they don't want you to use it's okay to use them occasionally but not every time so it really helped to flag these things up that I might otherwise have have just slipped past me you know, so it's just exactly. re it's refining these things yeah precisely there's a psychology of that too like if you're sharing a style with a, with a group no one wants to be told that their that their writing is bad but they don't mind when it's, when they, when your software tells them <laughs> yeah yes, yes. <laughs> that's very true i have a similar thing as denise in fiction um so i have certain author clients who often make the same mistakes with certain phrasing and it's not they're not idiomatic variations either because i've 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 checked i mean they are they're just non standard variations and i and i want to flag them up but they happen so frequently that sometimes my eye gets used to them and so i forget to query them and again i can just build those in to the preferences just ask for a flag up and yeah, and i okay. don't have to work. i can let my 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 brain focus on other things and let the software do my shout out my alarm calls yeah 100% exactly what it's designed for yeah. um daniel can you talk us through um the platform situation. Um, so there's a cloud version, a desktop version, and there's PC users out there and Mac users. Um, who can access what? Oh, wow, we made such a mess of this. We really made this more complicated than we should have done. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to simplify the site, but what, what it's really easy. Like, it sh we should have just said, uh, if you're on a PC, use Perfectit 3, and now Perfectit 4. If you're on a Mac, you use Perfectit Cloud. We made it way more intricate. There are little <laughs> slight tiny exceptions and they don't matter. It's Perfected okay. Cloud is the best one for the Mac and Perfected 4 is the best thing for the PC. Okay, great. Thank you. That's simple. It's not complicated no, at all. That's it. <laughs> it used to be much more complicated. Don't look at the website. Don't look at the website. <laughs> right then. You heard it first here. So how much does it cost and what's included? Uh, so Perfect, it's an annual subscription. It's uh, 70 US dollars per year. Um, and for certain users, so if you're a member of a professional editing society, it goes as low as $49 per year. It's a um, steal! It's a steal! <laughs> it really is. And it's designed, it is designed to be a steal, genuinely. It, you know, we're trying to price this in a way that it, it should be a complete no-brainer. This should be, well, obviously, that's going to pay for itself quickly. And especially the way we've done it is we try and make this the right price for freelancers. Like we've tried actively to make sure that freelancers can afford it because you know we're a small company and we don't do a lot of marketing. Our very best marketing is when when uh, independent editors go into a workplace or or tell a workplace about it and they say you're not using Perfect It. You you don't you don't realize and then they do our marketing for us because they love this product. Um, so we very intentionally put that uh, the pricing is is designed to be affordable. It's designed to be a complete no brainer decision. And it is. It really is. I mean, if you're, um, you know, running your, if you're a freelancer, you're running a business and it's a business expense and it's, God, it pays for itself in one job practically. I mean, it really does. So. And if you're an, an independent writer, um, it might be well be that you're writing books as an, in addition to your day job. So it might even be that your, your, your books, particularly for a fiction writer, you might still be at the beginning of your journey and, you might not be earning income from your books. It's something you're 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 at the you're at the start of that process, and so being able to access this type of software and to do these things in a in a way that's still affordable is is a huge thing. So thank you for keeping the price so low. <laughs> yeah, pleasure. <laughs> so where do we get it? Tell us about the um. Tell us where we can find out more about it and um and download it if people want to. Yeah, really simple. So it's it's the website is intelligentediting.com. Uh, you can just Google perfect it and it's going to come up. Um, and and I would you know say that there is a, a as we mentioned a couple of times there's a two week free trial. So if you are an independent writer, you really can just run it on a book in that two weeks and and you'll 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 see it and you run it and that first one is is solved within that time. Um, I think within that no within the um, Within those two weeks, you, you can run it on, on a past document and you're going to get a really clear impression of what it does. And, and most people who try it just immediately go on to buy it. 
Um, you can also just buy it and there's a, a 30 day money back guarantee. Like we're absolutely sure that when you download this, you're gonna like it. There is uh, a, if, you, if you've been listening, you know, most we've, we've been talking about uh, Perfect It 4, which is PC specific. So that's a download through the website, but there's also um, Perfect It Cloud, which is available on a Mac and that's a download through the, the Office Store, which there's also a link to on the website. You just click the free trial. Fantastic. And I think it's worth reminding people, um, professional editors, if you're members of professional associations, check your member benefits to see if it's in your member benefits to get um, a discounted version of it. Most most editing societies around the world are covered at this point and yeah. then you, it's a 30% discount, so it's well worth doing. Yeah, so we'll go, through, put, go through your member website, yeah. We'll put a, a link um, on in the show notes as well to a list of national editorial societies the world over as well. Yeah. So for, for people listening, yeah. um, you can get those. Daniel, thanks so much for talking to us. It's been really, really great to get your input. Um, we love Perfect It and um, we're really excited about um, the latest version. Thanks for bringing that to us. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Daniel. Thank Absolutely you very much. Absolutely honoured to be to have a special edition of, of the editing podcast. I think it's amazing. I love what you guys are doing, and really, truly appreciate it. Oh, thank oh, you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye, bye, Ben. Bye. 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 <laughs>